Next myth we're going to talk about is this idea of task complexity, or the myth that all shootings are the same, or as I think of it, stop making fun of the police. MagTech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range, and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand, and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some MagTech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at LuckyGunner.com. Task complexity is one of those things that is hugely important but nobody talks much about. And task complexity is a phrase that is used different places. I am using it specifically in the terms of a score. Okay, Task complexity has three components. It has decision characteristics, perception characteristics, and motor act characteristics. And the, the details are in the notes if you want to see them. Using those components, I can develop a score for how complex a task is from zero to 52. Obviously, the higher the score, the more complex the task is. So, going back to your point, the research tells us that as task complexity increases, a lower arousal level is best for optimal performance. So, like, you know, the guy that's having to make a sniper shot, that kind of stuff, I want his heart rate as low as possible. That's a fairly complex task. He is always going to benefit from a lower heart rate. Does that mean he can't make the shot at a higher heart rate? No, he's always going to be better if it's lower. Realistically, okay, in every conceivable scenario I can think of, the police are going to be performing tasks of greater complexity than the armed citizen is. For instance, one of the things we really see police officer performance tank in is in bunch shootings. Guys, if you have three officers on scene and one officer starts shooting, what are the other two highly likely to do? Regardless of whether they have sights, trigger, or legal justification to do so, right? I can think of very few cases in which the armed citizen is going to be in a bunch shooting problem. I mean, I just don't see it happening that much. That's a, yeah. Well, maybe in this classroom. This classroom could be a bunch shooting problem, right? That would be one of the few cases, right? So, uh, there's this horrible quote. Adults who carry handgun, concealed handguns are often inadequately trained. Public safety should be left to train police officers who are far less likely to shoot innocent bystanders. What does the data tell us? Who is more likely to shoot innocent bystanders? The cops, right? Dude, here's the story, and this is not I'm making fun of the police, but it's the truth. When you hear the police yell, get down, if you can hear that, it applies to you too. Okay, this is the way that works, you know? It's fair warning for everybody involved, okay? And of course, the experts are going to argue that poor performance by police officers in high stress scenario shows that private citizens are equally incapable of performing well. And the, somehow the implicit assumption is all this is that they're facing the same problems when they aren't. So first off, are agencies going out of their way to hire gunfighters for patrol? No. No, they're not. Interest in firearms, and remember how Cirillo thought it was important for screening, will prevent you from getting hired. Okay? There are departments that will, when you apply, will have like three lines for the gun you own. If you have to ask for the continuation sheet, are you going to be considered for that position? No. No, you're not. Okay? That's just the way it is, right? Um, Avini writes, Americans assume that law enforcement officers are properly selected, trained, equipped, and assigned. Unfortunately, there is a serious disconnect between what the public assumes to be true and what is. Referring to testing standards, there has been increasing pressure on police trainers to transform substandard recruit material into acceptably trained and capable police officers. And guys, here's one of the things nobody wants to talk about. Uh, intelligence tracks very roughly with processing speed, I very directly with that, right? If you, I don't know, have court cases that say you can limit uh, the IQ of police officers you hire, which there is that case law out there, they can actually have an arbitrary cutoff your IQ. I have never heard of an IQ too low to be a cop, but there are apparently IQs too high to be a cop. So, the question we have to ask ourselves is, are the police well trained? Some of them. Some of them, yeah. The shooting standards continue to be lowered. I know, uh, he, he actually just retired. Uh, a long, long time ago, uh, the, there was a guy by the name of Mike Rawlings who got, uh, he had been a lieutenant over by Tom's place. Like literally, like you could see the precinct building from Tom's old range in Memphis, right? So he knew Tom knew how to teach people to shoot. When he got in charge of the firearms training unit out at Memphis PD, he actually came to Tom and said, hey, I want your help. And then Tom says, I almost fell on the floor because that never happens, right? <laughs> and for a brief shining time, he actually got their qualification standards bumped up, right? You never hear about police training standards ever going up in recent memory. Uh, there's an exception that's even more disturbing. As far as I know, Kentucky has the lowest or the shortest range on a post standard. Kentucky only requires for the state post to shoot out to 12 yards. Okay, don't need to do anything beyond that. I've only heard of one instance of a big 
police department increasing their uh, qualification standards, right? Now, does that sound like a good thing? Maybe. The police department looked at it and said, we have too many patrol rifles on the street. How do we get less patrol rifles on the street? <laughs> so yeah, the, the one exception is even worse than the normal stuff, right? Uh, the other thing I'd point out is that police training hours can be very misleading. My agency, we did ultimately fix this, but our minimums per year were to fire four courses of fire, 104 rounds total, twice a year. How many training hours do we get for that? Eight. Eight documented training hours. That's worse than CLDs. Yes, it is, right? I'd say this, the best that police performance tells us is what happens when poorly trained, non-gun people who only shoot once or twice a year become involved in highly complex situations. I don't think it's a good guide. Armed citizen shootings involve a self-selecting population. You have very few armed social workers in the ranks of the CCW world. You have a bunch of armed social workers in the police ranks these days. Yeah, depending on the city you're in, it's the vast majority of people. Okay, for the armed citizen, the typical scenario is an armed robbery in a public place. That should carry with it some impending warning. If you don't have your head absolutely up your ass, right, walk out of the, uh, the Kroger at 11 o'clock at night because your wife had to have whatever it was. When you're walking out, Mookie and Ray Ray, who were kind of leaned up on the wall when you walked out, when you, walk, uh, when you walked in, when you walk out of, out of the Kroger, Mookie and Ray Ray stand up and plot an intercept course towards you. What is that? A clue. A clue. So you can either ignore that, which makes the situation worse, or what? Go, oh shit, what should I do? How about we'll just turn around and walk back into the store? I'm, you know, for the arms system, that's probably the best option. But if that isn't an option, at least you know what's coming. I already touched on this. What is a typical cop's clue that they're gonna be involved in a gunfight? Getting shot or shot at, right? Completely different world. Uh, again, the FBI research says that 66% of assaults carry no warning and occur suddenly over very minor violations. So I think that just from the, the nature of this, how you set up the scenario, armed citizens are gonna be a lot less likely to be driven into that emotional response because they're gonna have more notice that it's coming, right? Interesting, you know, range master students. Our students perform better in real world scenarios with less training than the typical police officer for several reasons. Um, I think we're more likely to be operating in a rational state because we try really hard to build the mental maps and explain to them what violence is gonna look like. The armed citizen problems are less complex than police problems. Let me, trans let me translate some gobbledygook. See, Tiffany tells me I'm not supposed to put my notes up here in the lecture, but I can't get all this stuff into the, the little notes over here. When police officers shoot the wrong person, we call that a mistake of fact shooting. Isn't that a nice way to sanitize that? 75% of mistake of fact shootings take place in low light. Okay, low to no light situations. Do armed citizen shootings involve low to no light situations? Almost never, because they're on parking lots where there's lights and stuff like that. The police have an obligation to go into dark places and root out bad guys. Do you as the armed citizen have that same obligation? I mean, if you think you do, we need to talk, right? 